We're here at the International Conference on AIDS in Vienna. We're with Maureen Goodnow from the University of Florida in Gainesville. And you have uh, brought something to the conference uh, that, that relates to potential, maybe future cure. We keep using that word now, and, and I think uh, it might be best to first tell us about that. Well, the research that we're doing in my laboratory is involved in looking at how the virus interacts with a certain type of cell called the macrophage, which is one of the major non-lymphocyte cells in the immune system. And the virus infects these cells because macrophages express the same type of co-receptors that lymphocytes do. So the virus can get in, but how the virus behaves in macrophages is very different because it doesn't kill the cells. It actually um, integrates and can persist in these cells for a long period of time. Is this like a so, compartment then? Or is that what we well, macrophages are all over the body, so mm -hmm. it's a compartment in the sense in the, that it's that, a cell, yeah. but not a specific location. Exactly. Now, we did hear some interesting data at the meeting, um, at the workshop, that uh, Francoise Barris and Missy put together on reservoirs and latency, and mm -hmm. that was from the talks that le looked at um, virus in particularly in the brain where the major cell is the macrophage or a macrophage like cell that's infected but also more recently now there seems to be data that other cells in the brain are infected and that you can actually find virus in the central nervous system so what this is telling us is that there's um, definitely multiple ways that the virus can set up latency in different cell types and that these cells can be in very different and this this is the meeting that uh, Dr. Diefenbach was referring to that you actually had the press conference on. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and so forth. So um, this was a pre-meeting workshop. Pre-meeting um, workshop. Yes. The workshop was set up specifically to focus on this particular aspect of HIV infection. Mm -hmm. So over the years, we've been able to come up with strategies to certainly treat people once they're infected. Mm -hmm. We're coming up with strategies for how to. Uh, prevent infection mm -hmm. by behavior and, and other ways, and that if you are exposed, how to protect yourself potentially through the vaccine area. Mm -hmm. So now that we know we can treat and really suppress the virus for long periods of time, um, what we now want to know is can you actually get people off therapies? Because mm -hmm. these therapies, as, as Carl mentioned, are they're, they're difficult to take and, and to stay on these lifelong are not, you know, it's not necessarily the best outcome. Since we now know much more about the fact if you get rid of most of the virus, that there are places that the virus is hanging out, um, they have now developed, you know, multiple strategies are being developed. One is the stem cell strategy that you mentioned, another is, you know, looking at individual cases where if you do bone marrow transplantation or if you do stem cell transfers, these all are strategies yeah. that <clears throat> tell us so that potentially this should be possible. Mm -hmm. The problem with those strategies is that they're not going to be universally except you know, they're not going to be universal strategies that can be given out to millions and millions of people. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand how people naturally, like the elite controllers that mm -hmm. Francois mentioned, mm -hmm. how do these people naturally keep the virus under control mm -hmm. when they still have some reservoirs and so maybe a total eradication isn't going to be necessary we can come to what people and what Tony Fauci talked about was the functional cure. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the, to understand how that pathogenesis or non-pathogenesis works. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, is there any other pieces that you believe we should probably know about because I, I know we don't want to just cast it out there that there's the, the that the cure is being looked at seriously which is what it is but it but there are so many different pieces that have to happen this is not something that we can count on next week or next month no. or next year no. this is a long term process and maybe all things would be very different if we had uh, vaccines that we had tried way back uh, had been successful but short of that we now have to try other things which are novel treatments that might well, evolve. Well, and I think what the vi what's happening and what we know now is that the virus is telling us how much we don't know about the human yeah. immune system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if we understood everything about 
uh, human immunology and all the different cell types and how they behave, this would be uh, basically a no-brainer. But the fact that it's such a challenge is indicating to us that there's huge amounts of information about the human, human immunity that we still have yet to learn. And so in order to really build um, a strong basis for moving ahead, on the one hand what may seem incrementally versus on the other hand with the sort of uh, you know, more dramatic types of therapies. And how do you, I mean, I think there's actually two ways to look at this. If we can understand more about how the virus sets up uh, the sort of housekeeping in these cells, mm -hmm. then there are two things. One is we can start to figure out how to get rid of it, but we also might be able to can start to think about how do you prevent the virus from getting into those particular types of cells early on. Right. Well, this is all very interesting, and I, I know that uh, it's like one of those messages that you say, stay tuned. That's right. Because there'll be so much more to happen, and, and I know Carl mentioned that there'll be more, of course, at Croy, and uh, of some trials. So. And I think the attention on it, I think the fact that there has been the, uh, the, this workshop and that there's a continued, um, going to be a continued focus on mm -hmm. this is really important because it starts to stimulate people to think about mm -hmm. uh, the challenges and to get creative and thinking about what we can do to solve this problem. I wonder if we'll have more pharmaceutical companies going to the R&D. Uh, into basic science because it's there's so much that like you're suggesting it's it's hard to come up with drugs and small molecule inhibitors if you don't know what you're targeting right yeah well it seems like that's that's the big question so it looks like we'll be looking forward to that in the next number of months and years ahead okay. thank you so much for your time I appreciate it